Well, hello friends, welcome back to the program. Today, we are gonna look at implementing Railro in the Serenity Dynamic Loader. And uh, Railro is basically a, a way to um, protect some parts of a program's um, memory at runtime uh, once we have populated it. And it's specifically about the um, location of randomized library functions. So uh, since we started using ASLR in Serenity uh, and dynamic libraries, um, when we load a program and, uh, and run it, uh, we have to populate this big table of like, where is printf? Where is um, this library call, that library call, stuff like that, right? Uh, and all of that stuff goes into this big table um, in the process address space called the global offset table or the GOT. And currently the GOT is um, just part of every process's data segment. So if we look at, for example, the process map for this terminal right here, then the GOT is just in here somewhere in the um, uh, data segment and as you can see it is writable. So what that means is essentially that uh, if you get somehow uh, control over the terminal program and you're able to write somewhere here uh, then you can use that to hijack where something like printf would go uh, and you, if you're able to overwrite the entry for printf in the GOT um, next time terminal tries to printf something it will install instead call your function. So um, the point of Railro is that it's basically um, a, a message to the dynamic linker that says, after you have performed all the relocations, it's okay to mark uh, all of them as read-only. So uh, I think we're pretty much set up to implement this. Um, we just need to like do the actual um, details. So step one is to turn on um, the railroad flags here with our um, linker invocation. So if we just look for where we call the linker, so we have um, C++ linking flags. So we'll just add these linking flags right here to our linker invocation. We're already telling the linker to use uh, GNU style hashes because they are slightly better hashes than the system five hashes, which is the elf default, I think. Um, but now we're also adding these. So our um, binaries will now be, be built with railroad turned on. So let's see what happens if we do that. So yeah, so it's just a matter of relinking everything, right? And if we look at, for example, uh, the browser, then we can see that now we have a GNU railroad uh, program header in this elf. So of course, if we try to boot now, uh, it will choke because we don't handle these headers. So we're choking at um, trying to trying to start up the system server. And then we have an assertion in the dynamic loader. Um, so, oh yeah, and we also don't support DT bind now, but that should be easy to do. So what we were doing here, by the way, is we're not only enabling Railro, um, which I think, I think the purpose of Railro is to just segregate all of the uh, GOT entries into like a single piece of contiguous memory just to facilitate actually marking that memory read-only later uh, so that it's, there's no overlap with other unrelated stuff. Uh, but then we can also pass this now argument, which uh, means that all of the relocations have to happen uh, like immediately, synchronously when you load, uh, and there's no lazy binding anymore. So we want both of these, um, because if if any of these relocations were lazy, then we wouldn't be able to mark it read only, uh, because we have no way of marking it read write later on again. Um, so every all the relocations have to happen in one go. Um, but yeah, so we don't support that flag. But 
dynamic object cpp 172 um, so we need to support dt bind now sure and what do we normally do with that I guess we can just stash it in dt flags d f bind now all right let's see what happens if we just do that Okay, so we are booting just fine, um, but I would imagine that nothing actually looks any different. So we still have terminal text and terminal data, but um, if you were paying attention, <laughs> you might have noticed that we previously had four kilobytes of data, and now we have eight kilobytes. And that would be because the linker has now segregated all of the Relro data into a um, separate page, right? So um, we should now be able to tell the kernel, once we have done all the relocations, to mark that read-only and effectively create a separate uh, memory region for the railroad. So um, let's see, that would we'll go to load program headers. So this is where we parse all the program headers, like uh, the, um, the stuff that we see with readelf dash L, so all of these boys here. Um, and we're currently looking for these two load headers, which tell us the text and data segments, respectively. Um, and we're also looking for TLS. But I guess we can just add another one here. So like region is rel row, doesn't exist. Um, so we will just add it. Yeah, there we go. And if it is the railroad header, then let's remember this region. So and let's just let's assert that we don't have multiple railroad headers in the elf because that smells like shenanigans. Okay, so then what we want to do is we want to, um, at the point where we have performed all the relocations, so like after we've done, wait, where do we do these? Um, okay, do, 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 do. who calls it? Oh, you're calling it. Okay. Load stage three. Okay, so here we perform the lazy relocations and the main relocations are in stage two. Okay, so stage two is all the main relocations. Stage three, lazy relocations. We're going to do all of them um, in one go, as we talked about. But let's see. So after the lazy relocations, then... That's when we mark the text segment as read exec. So we um, we make sure that it's not writable. If we were doing text relocations, it might have been writable at this point. Uh, but here's where we mark it read exec um, with no way of going back. And then after we've done that, it should be fine to also do the rel row. So I guess if um, so, we have to stash the memory address of the railroad um, section somewhere. So railroad uh, segment size. So if we have a railroad segment, then uh, railroad segment address. Um, And we will say prot read 
but nothing else because essentially the railroad segment just has the function pointers to all the library calls that this executable might want to call. So once we have resolved all of them, there's no need to ever write to this again. Um, so writing to it would just be a bug, um, which is why this is quite nice. So of course this should succeed. Uh, and protect dot railroad, let's say, prod read. And let's fail. Okay. Yes, and then we just have to actually save this information somewhere. So when we when we load the program headers, um, then after we have figured out the reservation is where in memory uh, this is where the um, where the ASLR happens. So we reserve memory for the whole dynamic object and then allocate that. We allocate the text segment here and the data segment here. And I guess we can just compute the, the, the railroad if Railroad region has value. So if we do have a railroad region, then railroad. Um, I need to add some <laughs> some variables for this. Railroad segment address. Okay. Railroad region size and memory. And. Railroad segment address is, um, I guess it's wherever we load the text segment. Wait. So it's kind of it's a little bit messy because um, because of the ASLR, then like these, all the addresses here are just relative addresses. So we've we've added like um, a randomized base to everything. Um, but if we look at the text segment, which is at the virtual zero, and then we just have to find the virtual address uh, of the railroad segment relative to the text segment. So the uh, railroad base would be the um, wait 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 um, railroad region Desired load address, okay. Um, plus whatever the text segment load address is. So maybe this is how we do it. Offset, something like that. Hmm. Yeah, text segment offset pi the desired load address for the railroad region. Let's see if that makes sense. Um, I guess if it, if it runs it, it'll make sense maybe. So we'll see. Okay. Cool, look at that. So now we have uh, the terminal data segment has been split into two parts here, as you can see. So the first part is now read only, and uh, the second part is read write. So only the first part of the data segment was railroad. And actually we could even, could even update the name of that segment just to, um, just to make it clear in the process memory map output, if we say here something like um, as putter. Um, we 
you would do like dot railroad. And if that fails, pair set mf name. Um, yeah, something like that. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, if it fails, it fails. So we should be nice. And oh, and of course, this has to be able to compile on other systems as well for some reason. I still don't know why we're building the dynamic loader on other systems, but we are. And I guess that's a regular C string. Um, and also my parens are not lined up correctly. It's nice that we're doing this though, because um, I didn't even didn't even really think about this being an issue, but but it's kind of obvious that it is. Okay, what am I messing up here? Um, wait, what? Oh, wait, back up. I, f I forgot to pass an argument here. Um, I guess the file name. Yeah, this is annoying, by the way, that uh, Sea Lion doesn't realize that I'm building for Serenity. It's something with our CMake, uh, CMake list files that it doesn't understand. Um, I haven't looked into that yet. All in all, though, like I'm super happy with, um, with this Sea Lion IDE so far. Um, and it keeps giving me these tips about things. Like I see these little squiggly lines, right? And then it tells me here something like some clang tidy warning. And very often these little suggestions are pretty relevant. So like here, like, why don't you make a const reference here instead? And then you look at it and it's like, mm, well, this is a little bit of a semi chunky object, right? To be passing by value like that. Um, so, but I, I still didn't, I still didn't just do that thing where like I go and, uh, I just, um, fix everything that the ID warns about just to get a clean, um, clean looking warning less state. Although it is tempting. Also now I think I built twice. I don't even know why. Got sidetracked. Let's look again. And there we are. Cool. So now we can even identify the railroad um, segment here. Uh, very, very cool. So that's awesome. And I think um, I think today we're just gonna do this for main executables. Um, not we're not gonna do railroad in shared libraries. So. Um, because I'm a little bit low on time, but still, this is good progress. So let's go ahead and commit. Um, um, wait, is anything here standalone? I guess not really. We can just take everything with us. Uh, Lib elf. Plus everywhere or user land. Um, enable railroad for uh, all user land executables. Um, the dynamic loader will now mark um, railroad segment. Uh, read only after performing um, relocations. Um, yeah, this is pretty cool. Very, very cool. Hmm. Actually, I wonder, 
wonder what would happen if we would enable it for um, shared libraries as well. If we just go here and be like, like that, just relink everything. That is really fast, by the way. Nice and fast. Okay, so now we're crashing again because did not find symbol assertion failed. Um, well, that's a little weird. So, does that mean that some assertion failed and we're trying to assert, or? This is all very, <laughs> very ambiguous. Um, I guess, I guess that we're just failing to, oh, maybe we were failing to do relocations in the shared library, so like, we're asserting in some library code, and then we don't actually have assertion failed resolved. Um, so, what will be the problem? Like, um, so system server. Um, can we see who he links against? Like, various, so say libc, right? And now libc has GNU Railroad as well. I would assume that would be fine though. So does everybody get a rail GNU Railroad? Sure. libjs. That's nifty. Um. Hmm. Patch PLT entry. Hmm. Okay, let's turn on some debug information here. So it seems to be like succeeding at various relocations and then it fails for this specific one, for this specific relo action. Um, wonder why that is. So relo action. Are we being too eager here? Like, do we not have all the things in memory yet or something? Um, eagerly buy now the PLT entries. Yeah, that's what we're doing. So, Patch PLT entry would fail if we can't look up the symbol. Okay. And I would assume this would be a global symbol. Hmm. Interesting. And 
a search and fail would be in libc. It is here. Um, and there's some way to get the symbols, dash dash symbols, right? Assertion failed. Is right here as global. Hmm. Okay, let's do a little bit of logging here. Looking for symbol mm -hmm. in mm hmm. Yeah, just see what it's doing. This might be, um, I don't actually know what the issue is at all here, so. Um, let's see, at this point we're only looking in, I guess the main executable and libsystem.so, so. so um, I wonder if we're simply trying to resolve these symbols too early. Could it be that it's just too early? What function is this? Do relocation, right. Um, Hmm. Wait, let me just verify that we didn't find sad face. Um, we didn't find, yeah. So why don't we have more global objects? Global objects at this point. Load elf, sure. Hmm. Oh, wait. Libsystem is probably has an assertion in it. Or somebody has an assertion in it, and we don't know about libc yet. Yeah, okay, so this is probably like a big ordering issue here in the way the dynamic loader works. Uh, and we need to reorganize things so that we load everything and have all the symbols available so we can see them. Um, global objects. Because we don't put things in there until after we've linked them. Okay. Yeah, this, this will probably take uh, a bit of work to reorganize this and get it right. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that now because I don't have time to um, don't have time to get into this bigger task, but uh, at least at least we know that, um, that that's probably what it is. So leaving something for the future, um, as we always do, because <laughs> there's infinity things to do. But uh, I think uh, just getting the executables was a good thing to get done today. So I think we're gonna end the video here. Uh, let's try on some other program like browser. Pit of browser. And where is the browser? Here, look at him. Eight kilobytes of Relro, very cool. Yeah, so that'll be it for today. Thank you very much for checking out the video. I hope that you saw something interesting. Um, and I guess I hope to see you next time. Bye.